Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here, and today with the next topic that is the the in the discrete time domain the difference equations. So in the previous videos we saw about the differential equations which were for the continuous time domain. In this video we see the systems described by difference equations. Okay, so this is the discrete time counterpart of what we have uh, seen in the previous video. Now again out of the many types of these different equations the type that we use to describe our LTI systems and then also the causality property involved you know how it is from the previous video so these equations are called linear constant coefficient difference equations now the shortcut the same but you know now what this D means for so first of all let me tell you if you are seeing an improved video quality or a changed video quality so this is thanks to Umar Khayyam my cousin who has given me this camera for uh, you know recording a better quality video so once again thanks to thank to you uh, from my side and also on behalf of my audience okay so coming to the topic discrete time LTI systems now again what do you have you have the similar thing you have an input given to a system x of n and you have this system and this gives you an output y of a fine now this system could be uh, represented the input output relationship could be represented as what y of n plus two times y of n minus one and this is equal to x of n so have a look now again you cannot predict directly what the input is what the output is you cannot say a direct relationship what is the relation between the input and the output so this is involving now a difference previously this involved differentiation uh, the, the, the derivative so those were differential equations now this involved the difference so this is called a difference equation fine now now what do you have have a look over here this is the first difference this is the first difference this is the first difference involved so what do we have this is called a first order this is called a first order equation which means a first order linear constant coefficient difference equation fine now to write an nth order equation to write an nth order equation nth order equation how would it be written now the order is again what the order says what the, 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 the maximum difference in work. So over here the maximum difference is the first. This is called the first order equation. Fine. Now the nth order equation is represented as what? A summation. As in the previous video we have. We have k running from 0 to n. A k. Y of n minus k. So the y comes on the one side. And this is equal to summation k running from 0 in this case say m b k and the x terms on the other side this is so this is an nth order difference equation used to describe an LTI system is that fine okay now what do you have again the solution is spec the solution if you have if you want to find the solution of any equation so you have what you have y of n this would be the sum of the particular solution and the sum of the home and the homogeneous solution and you know the particular solution is for a particular input the homogeneous solution is the solution to the equation when x of n is equal to zero fine now in this equation if my n is equal to zero okay if n is equal to zero in this particular equation which means you don't have the difference of the output involved so what would you have a would directly be zero a naught and y of n and this would be equal to what a summation b run, uh, sorry uh, k running from 0 to m and uh, bk x of n minus k 
and now if I write it in terms of y of n, so this a0 would come to this other side, so I would have a 1 over a0, so 1 over a0 and this thing. So have a look, the recursion is not involved, which means the difference of the output is not involved. We don't need to know the previous value of the output in order to know the, the next video or the present video, the present value as in this case over here if you need to know y of n you need to know y of n minus 1 first over here if you need to know y of n you don't need to know y of n minus 1 this equation is called as a non-recursive equation this is called what this is called a non-recursive equation non-recursive equation fine now the speciality of this non-recursive equation is what? That it does not require any y of n minus k, right? It what? It does not require, does not require y of n minus k and y of n minus k was given from the auxiliary condition. This was an extra information needed with the present values, with the present input, with the present output. This was an extra information needed, which means that in this particular case, in the non-recursive equation case, what do you have? We do not require an auxiliary condition. Do not require auxiliary condition. So this is the speciality and the systems that are described by this sort of an equation which does not require the previous value, does not require an auxiliary condition, those are called as non-recursive systems and simple is that. Fine. Now for n, uh, for the value of n greater than or equal to 1, this was for n equal to 0 and now what do you have? The next thing is if your value of n is greater than or equal to 1. So what do you have? In the summation, let's say I uh, first take out the 0 term. So 0 to n, so let's say first I take 0 a0 y of n. So plus a1 y of n minus 1 and like this, so I write a summation now. So I write the summation, this is k running from 1 to n. k running from 1 to n, you have an a k y of n minus k and this is equal to summation k running from 0 to m b k x of n minus k. Fine. Now if you uh, want to write a in terms of y of n, so you need to shift whatever you need to do, you do it yourself, y of n is given as what? Uh, you would be first of all multiplying this one upon a naught with everything and then you have this whole thing. So summation uh, k running from 0 to m, uh, bk x of n minus k and then you have a minus summation k running from 1 to n a k and y of n minus k and this is what you have. So have a look now, to need to, if you need to know y of n, you need to know y of n minus k, which means if you need to know the present value, you need to know the previous value of the output. So which means that here we have some repetition involved, some recursion involved and this sort of a system is known as, this sort of an equation is known as a recursive equation. Recursive equation. Isn't it like this? It is. And the system that are described by recursive equation, there will be recursive systems. So which means that in this case, we need to know y of n minus k, right? y of n minus k is required. y of n minus k, so I would put a question mark and this would come from the auxiliary conditions. This would come from the auxiliary condition. Fine. Now, if I talk about the non-recursive system, if I talk about the non-recursive system, so what do you have? You have a y of n, which is equal to 1 upon a0, and if I bring this a0 inside of the summation, because this is a constant 
A naught is a constant, B k is a constant. So if I take B k outside or if I bring A naught inside, nothing happens. K running from 0 to M. You have a B k upon upon A naught, you have X of N minus k. Isn't it like this? It is. Now what do you have? If you have a system, if you have a system, you know, uh, that uh, x of n is the input to the system, the impulse response of the system is h of n, and the output of the system is y of n. So how do you represent the output of this system? You say that y of n, y of n is equal to summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity, x of k into h of n minus k. Or you say what? You say that this is equal to y of n is equal to or. Again k running from negative infinity to positive infinity. If you say h of k into x of n minus k because we know that the convolution operator is a commutative operation. So have a look now. If this is let's say equation A. Let's say this is equation B. So both A and B are representing an LTI system, both A and B are representing the same system, both A and B are giving me the output, have a look, in terms of the shifted input signal and the impulse response, have a look. So what information am I getting from the recursive from the non-recursive equation? What information am I getting about the impulse response of the system, about the impulse response of the system? Which means that if you compare these two, so you have a bk upon a naught, and over there my variable was k, I would write an n. If I write uh, a comparing, so I would write it in terms of n, okay? What do I have? I have that my impulse response, that is h of n, because over here I have in terms of k, right? This is also okay, but my signal is basically in terms of n. So the impulse response is basically b b n upon a naught. But have a look, what is the speciality? The speciality is that this is from negative infinity to infinity, but this is from zero to m. So this signal, this is the impulse response only when your n is between zero and m, and it would be zero otherwise so this is what you have come to know about the the non recursive equation now the recursive equation we cannot uh, simplify it like this because it depends on various other terms but for the non recursive case this is the simple equation which means that we can just compute the 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 what the impulse response simply and directly like that but have a look again what do we have? Another speciality in this case that this is existing for a finite interval of time. So these systems are called as finite interval. Uh, wait, let me tell you finite FIR interval, finite impulse response. Sorry, finite, finite impulse response. Finite impulse response systems. You say FIR, okay? FIR. FIR equation, FIR system because this is a finite impulse response. Now, uh, talking about the auxiliary conditions as well. So, I will write it over here. I would remove this. I would write this FIR over here. Fine, and then what do you have? The auxiliary condition I need to write. The auxiliary condition. So if you need to know the present value, you need to know the previous value. So which means that I would need to know, uh, and also, also this is satisfying the condition of initial rest, right? We said that our system would be causal. Our system would be causal. To simplify it because the and why got also you know it from the previous video and most of the real life system all of the real life systems are causal 
So if x of n is equal to 0 for n less than n naught, this means that y of n would also be 0 for n less than n naught, or also give it an equal sign. Do we have an equal sign? Yes, we have. We don't. Well, you can. So let me remove it. We don't have it in the book. Now, now what do you have? So I would have it like this that I would need to know y of negative n. The auxiliary condition would be what? I would need to know y of negative n. I would need to know y of negative n plus 1, y of negative n plus 2, and so on till y of negative 1 and all of these values. If this is implying the condition of initial rest, all of these values would be equal to 0 and this is what my auxiliary condition is. They would all be 0. Fine, so let me and the auxiliary conditions have a look, these are for this case, okay? These are for the recursive equation case. In the non-recursive, we do not require any auxiliary condition. These are for the recursive case. Now these all values, negative n, negative n plus 1, these are all y of negative 1, this is all lying less than n naught, okay? This is all lying less than n naught. And if the input is lying less than n naught is 0, so the output would also be 0. Now how is this? So this you would get to know when I solve the example, okay? This might be a little confusing point, but let me tell you that all these values, negative n, negative n plus 1, negative n plus 2, they are all lying on the left hand side of this n0, which means that all these values are less than n0. So which means that less than n0, the input is 0, which means if it is a causal system, it is satisfying the condition of elision rest. So if the input is 0 for this particular time, the output would also be 0. And you can see simply that if you have a first order equation, you, if you have a, so I would write it over here, okay, if you, if you have a first order equation, so you will only require y of negative 1, this is it. If you have a second order, you would require both y of negative n and negative 2. Third order, y of negative 1 negative 2, negative 3 and similarly for the nth order for the nth order you would have to go till n y of minus n this n is representing what? this n is representing the order of the equation and I believe now this point is clear if this y is representing the order of the equation you need to start from y of negative 1 till the order of y of negative n and that's it, okay. So I believe I, I have an example to solve. So let's say I solve it in the next video, okay. We, we talked about the impulse response of this one system, non-recursive systems, which was a finite impulse response. We see the recursive system in the next. We would not be generalizing them, but we would see a general we would be seeing a general idea of that. And now continuing discussion from the previous video today, I solve an example. So the book example, you know y of n minus half of y of n minus 1 and this is equal to x of n. So have a look. The input output relationship we cannot predict how the input is related to the output. Fine. So what do we do? We solve this and uh, also we will see the impulse response aspect of the system. But have a look. Is this a recursive equation? Is this a non-recursive equation? So yes, this is a recursive equation. Because of the y of negative n plus 1, negative y of n minus 1, this is a recursive equation. So, coming to the solution, let's say I write it in terms of y of n. So y of n is equal to what? It would be equal to x of n and plus half of y of n minus 1. 
So this is my basic equation. Now if I'm talking about the impulse response of the system also, I am interested in both the cases. So have a look, if the input to the system x of n is k times delta of n, right? k is the weight of the impulse, okay? Now, uh, this system would be also causal. So causality would imply what? Causality. This would imply that this system would also fulfill the condition of initial rest. Condition of initial rest. Which means that if my input is 0, x of n is 0 for n less than or equal to, so I will ask you this value, then y of n is 0 for n less than or equal to what value? What would be the value in this case? Have a look to the, the, the this impulse response. To the input, yes? What would be the value? Yes, it would be negative 1. It would be negative 1 because the impulse response is 0 till negative 1. It exists at 0. So the n naught for the impulse system for the impulse signal case is negative 1. So now have a look. Uh, we would start off with what? We would start off uh, you know by by solving that is for y of n we would solve for y of n that is unknown for uh, the value of n greater than or equal to 0. So, now what do you have? Let's say first for 0, y of 0 would be what? y of 0 would be equal to x of x of 0 plus half of y of negative 1 and x of 0 would be the impulse signal which would be k times delta of n so let me write the weight k and this plus this would be 0 so this would be equal to k fine now y of y of 1 y of 1 would be equal to x of 1 plus half of y of 0. So x of 1 would be 0. Why? Because the impulse would only exist at k equal to 0. So x of 1 is 0 and then you have plus half of y of 0 and y of 0 is k. So y of 1 would come out to be half of k. y of 2 y of 2 would be equal to x of 2 plus half of y of 1 x of 2 would be 0 plus half of y of 1 is half of k so can I write 1 over 4 and generalizing it so can I write it as 1 over 2 squared into k right similarly y of 3 y of 3 would be what? It would be x of 3 plus half of y of 2. So x of 3 would again be 0 and then you have plus a half of 1 over 4 or, or, or you can write a 1 over 2 squared 1 over 4. So this would give me if I am interested in generalizing it. So this would give me a 1 over 2 cube into k. And similarly, similarly, if you have generally for any value of n, you have what? For any value of n, what do you have? For any value of n, y of n would be equal to 1 over 2 to the power n times the weight k and have a look, this is existing only for n greater than or equal to 0. So I can multiply a u of n with it as well. So this is my answer. And now have a look, you can see how the input is, what the output is, what is the relation. k is of course a constant, you give it an input value n, you get an output value y of n. That's it. Simple as it is.
Let's see what else do I have. Now, uh, talking of the impulse response of this system. Talking of the impulse response. Now, if this was my input x of n was k time delta of n, this was given to this LTI system. So, my output y of n was equal to 1 over 2 to the power n into k, right? Isn't it like this? Yes. Now, if the value of k is equal to 1, okay, if k is equal to 1, let's say for simplicity, so which means that x of n is equal to delta of n, and this is given to your LTI system. So, what would happen? Then my y of n would equal simply 1 over 2 to the power n. 1 over 2 to the power n. Won't it be like this? Yes. And what is this? What is this? You know this very well. That if my x of n is equal to delta of n. So this means that this is my impulse response. So I can write my h of n. And this is equal to 1 over 2 to the power n. And we were talking about t greater than or equal to 0. Because t less than 0 it was all 0. So you can say u of n over here also. And you have a u of n over here. So have a look now. This is the impulse response of this system. So I told you that we were, we were not able to generalize the impulse response for any recursive equation or any recursive system from the direct relation. But have a look. We have this impulse response for this particular system. So we can have the idea from it. And what is that idea? That this is an infinite impulse response equation. Infinite impulse response. And what are they called? I, I, R, double I, R equations or double I, R systems. And this was what was the thing that I needed to tell you. The unit impulse response of a recursive system, of a recursive equation, has an infinite interval has an infinite interval whereas uh, that non-recursive had a finite interval so that's it that's all about the differential and difference equations uh, so you, well I, I recorded these two videos separately but I would try you know this is smaller video so I would try to put it with the previous one so I would make it one video and that's all for this video see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah where the last topic of this chapter that is block diagram only remains. So till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers and do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.